All right, I think we're ready to start. Can I push this button? Is that gonna work? Beep. Hey, it worked. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, turn down the music maybe a little bit. That's just loud in my ears. Hope everybody's having a great, uh, what's today? Thursday? Thursday. Woohoo, great Thursday for everyone. Uh, maybe Friday for some of you, maybe Wednesday for some of you. I don't know how time works. It's complicated and I'm not smart enough to figure it out. Hi guys. Hi Maddie. Hi, who's here? Hi Old Dirty. Hi Old Rob. I know. Old Rob is gone for now. Bye bye Old Rob. It's just me. It's just boring old me now. Um, today I've been gifted with the opportunity to hang out with you guys and talk about stuff and read at you. Uh, but instead of just reading at you, we're going to do something fun, I think, maybe. I don't know. Um, so I had this plan of reading this book that's sort of like, uh, not sort of, that is exactly like a choose-your-own-adventure book. The problem with this is that the copy of the book that I own, I cannot find. So I had to resort to finding it online, which I did because the internet. Um, so I'm going to walk you kind of what we're going to do here today and the timelines and the time constraints that I'm under. And we're going to have a good time. We're going to do a lot of stuff. What's up, Black Rose? So let me say hello to people first. Hi, Fancy. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Mythical. Who else is here? Uh, Tuesday. Uh, Jay. What's up? Uh, hey, Lazy. Hi, everybody. Cool. I'm just looking here. I'm looking over there. Everything kind of is all over the place. I should be looking over here because it looks like I'm actually looking at you, chat. I'm petting you now. I'm petting you. Uh, the next step is for me to pour out a big bucket of dirty garage water and then ask you how your day is going while I try to make you pee. Instead, we're going to play a game together. Um, we're going to read. It's an adventure. You guys are going to be rolling some dice in chat. I don't know what the roll command is, but if Fancy can tell us what it is, because I already forgot and she told me like five minutes ago, we're going to be rolling d20s and d6s for the most part. So feel free to practice those dice rolls. Get them in there. I want to see a little bit of uh, a little bit of a dice action. Let's see who's going to roll really high to start us off. Come on, I want to see who the lucky, who's got the lucky dice today. Let's take a look. Exclamation point D twenty, I think, is the command in chat. Let's see it. Nineteen. All right, Katuska is our roller. That's what it is. Done. Katuska, thank you. Uh, Miss uh, Mount Giggs, listen, I have bad news for you. You suffer from dice. Uh, dice failure and you may need to see your doctor if it lasts for more than four hours you definitely need to go to the hospital um okay perfect it's okay everybody can roll the only rule that i ask right this is the only to so keep it sort of cohesive is when i ask when you know that a roll is coming up just wait for me to ask for it so i can then look at chat and catch up to what you guys are doing otherwise because i don't have my usual polling system i'm just going to look to you ask you what you want to do Give you, you know, you guys can talk, but it's going to be a lot of yes and no. So yays, I think, is a free, uh, if you drop a follow, then you have access to the yay sort of option. And nay will be like, no, we don't want to do that. That sounds terrible. We're not doing this. You have dumb ideas. So this is a book I've run before. I know how it works. So I'm going to ad lib a little bit. Uh, it kind of plays like a D&D adventure. But before we do anything else, here's what I need to know about your character. What race are they? You guys can just throw some options and then we'll kind of vote on them. And then, um, are they man, woman, non-binary? So let's start with what race. And that's just down to me finding a mini tail spire that'll fit. Forest gnome, done. Easiest thing. Perfect. Thank you, Fancy, for making my life super easy. Forest gnome. And then, uh, I guess... Woman will be yay, man will be nay, and non-binary will be literally any other emote. So feel free to toss them in chat, and then I'll look. I'll do a quick, because uh, I'm I'm Rob, so I'm really good at math. I can count and do additions and subtractions. Fire, okay, that's not about no. All right, we got a dude. We got a non-binary vote. Non-binary, two non-by, three non four non-binaries. Stray mutt, that's super useful. Okay. Not, oh, there's a potato. Thanks for the potato coffee blade. Appreciate it. All right. Looks like we're non-binary forest gnome. Who wants to bear the name of this gnome that may falter and die very briefly? Who is the namesake of this character? Did you say me? The first person to say me is it. If nobody wants to be them, that's fine. 
I will uh, I will assign a name to it that's randomly pulled from there. Not you. Geoff done. Geoff is their name. Okay, give me a second. I need to finish the little character sheet we got going on. So it's a forest known by the name of Geoff. Geoff, of course, classic name. It rolls right off the tongue. We love it. Um, yep. It's a name that I've heard very often, in fact, when, uh, I don't know when, but I'm sure I've heard it before. Geoff, let me finish this super quick. Geoff, there we go. Forest Gnome. I just need a little icon for this guy and we'll be off to the races. We'll get started. So, I have two hours to run you through, or if you die three times. After three deaths, it's game over. Pack it up, go home. If we hit two hours, well done. So we're going to be going through this super quick, not super quick, we're going to have a great time. And play along. If you don't want to play along, that's also okay. You can just listen. And if you don't want to do that, just go do anything else you want. I won't be upset with you. I just, I know exactly where you live. Don't worry about it. A non-binary forest gnome. Uh, let's use this person right here. Thank you, Hero Forge, for the little sneaky sneaky. Give me a second and we'll create the little character sheet for you and then we'll jump into the game. What? I know, right? Incredible. How can he be so talented? Nobody asked. Um, but it's true. All right, download. Let's get this guy. Geoff. Which is pronounced Jeff, I think. That's another spelling for Jeff, because Jeff, you can literally put any number of letters together, and it's always somehow pronounced Jeff. J-E-O-F-F, -F, Jeff. J-E-F-F, -F, Jeff. You can put a G somewhere in there, also Jeff. Like, I don't know how you don't spell Jeff anymore. All right, there we go. Save as. I may be rambling a little bit. That's okay, sorry. I'm going to pay attention to you guys in one second. And save as. Boom. 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 You'll see in a second why. All right. Let's jump into the game. Right here. Ooh, fancy. And I don't mean fancy as in fancy, but I mean fancy as in like, look how pretty. Let's make this a little bit smaller. We're going to bring in our little character sheet. Image. Uh, Geoff. And here we go. Where's our character sheet? Right there. Boom. Boom. All right. While this might look a little bit like D&D, it is not exactly D&D. It's D&D adjacent. And I think we'll make it work. You guys are super clever. You're going to figure this out. You're going to have a good time. So, Jeff, we're going to read this story together. We're going to figure out why the hell you're here or why the heck you're here. I apologize. It's, this is a Christian Minecraft stream. I know. And why... We're doing what it is that we're doing. It's going to be dope. So. Let's read the introduction. You guys ready? This is the, the part where I read at you for a minute and then we'll figure out the game. I apologize for some of the names. They are woefully out of date, but it is what it is. Here we go. Despite its name, Fang was an ordinary small town in the northern province of Chiang Mai. Situated on the river on the banks of the river Kok, K-O-K, -K, I didn't write it, it's just there, and made a convenient stopover for river traders and passengers throughout most of the year. A few barges, rafts, and sometimes even large sailboats could usually be found moored at Fang. But all that was long ago before the creation of the Trial of Champions. Now, once a year, the river is crammed with boats as people arrive from hundreds of miles around, hoping to witness the breaking of an ancient tradition in Fang and see a victor in the Trial of Champions. Psst, that's you guys. On the 1st of May each year, warriors and heroes come to Fang to face the test of their lives. Survival is unlikely, yet many take the risk for the prize is great. A purse of 10,000 gold pieces and the freedom of Chiang Mai forever. However... To become champion is no easy task. Some years ago, a powerful baron of Fang called Sukumvit decided to bring attention to his town by creating the ultimate contest. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's keep going. With the help of the townspeople, he constructed a labyrinth deep in the hillside behind Fang from which there was only one exit. 
The labyrinth was filled with all kinds of deadly tricks and traps and loathsome monsters. Sigmvid had designed it in a meticulous detail so that anybody hoping to face its challenge would have to use their wits as well as weapon skill. When he was finally satisfied that all was complete, he put his labyrinth to the test. He picked ten of his finest guards and fully armed they marched into the labyrinth. They were never seen again. The tale of the ill-fated guards soon spread throughout the lands, and it was then that Sukumvit announced the first trial of champions. Messengers and news sheets carried this challenge. 10,000 gold pieces and the freedom of Chiang Mai forever to any person surviving the perils of the Labyrinth of Fang. The first tier? 17 brave warriors attempted the walk, as it later became to be known. Not one reappeared. As the years passed and the trial of champions continued, it attracted more and more challengers and spectators. Fang prospered and would prepare itself months in advance for the spectacle it hosted each May. If I'm going too fast, I know faulty. I don't. I don't do that. I basically three minutes and we start. I don't. I don't like faffing about too much. I'm. I'm. I'm not a faffer. I don't know what that means, but I'm, I don't faff about. The town would be decorated, tents erected, dining halls built, musicians, dancers, fire eaters, illusionists, and every sort of entertainment entertainer hired and entries registered from hopeful individuals intent on making the walk. The last week of April found the people of Fang and its visitors in wildest celebration. Everybody sang, drank, danced, and laughed until day broke on the 1st of May when the town thronged to the gates of the labyrinth to watch the first challenger of the year step forward to face the trial of champions. We're almost done through the introduction, you guys. Bear with me. It's going to get spicy real quick. Having seen one of Sukumvit, or Sukumvit's challenges nailed to a tree, you decide that this year you, Jeff, will attempt the walk. For the last five years, you've been attracted to it, not for the rewards, but, the f but for the simple fact that nobody has ever yet emerged victorious from the labyrinth. You intend to make this the year in which a champion is crowned. Gathering up a few belongings, you set off immediately. Two days' walk takes you west to the coast, where you enter the cursed port Black Sand. Wasting no time in that city of thieves, you buy your passage on a small boat sailing north to where the River Cock meets the sea. And from there you take a raft upriver for four days, until you finally arrive in Fang. The trial begins in three days' time, and the town is in an almost hysterical mood of excitement. You register your entry with the officials and are given a violet scarf to, town to tie around your arm, informing everyone of your status, or status, however you pronounce that word. For three days, you enjoy Fang's greatest hospitality and are treated like a demigod. During your long merriment, you almost forget your purpose in Fang. But the evening before the trial, the magnitude of the task ahead begins to dominate your thoughts. Later, you are taken to a special guest house and shown to your room. There's a splendid four-poster four bed with satin sheets to help you rest, but there's little time left for sleep. We're going to skip a little bit ahead. Nah, we're going to keep going. This sets the mood pretty well. No one has ever tried so much. Ah. I guess, fella. I'm right there with you. I'd be like, cool. I'm just going to watch this person die. But that's why I'm not a hero. And you guys are Jeff. And I'm not Jeff. That's why it's not called Rackham, but it's called Jeff. So. Where were we? We're somewhere around here. Just before dawn, a trumpet call awakens you from vivid dreams of flaming pits and giant black spiders. That's my trumpet, and I'm sticking to it. Minutes later, there is a knock on your door, and a man's voice rings out, saying, Your challenge begins soon. Please be ready to leave in, oh, ten minutes. You climb out of bed, walk over to the window, and open the shutters. Already, people are thronging the streets, moving quietly through the morning mist. Spectators on their way to the labyrinth, no doubt, hoping to find good vantage points from which to watch the comp competitors. You turn away and walk over to a wooden table in which you, your trusty sword lies. You pick it up and cut the air with a mighty sweep, wondering what beasts its sharp edge may soon have to meet. Then you open the door into the corridor. A small man greets you with a low bow as you emerge from your bedroom. Please, follow me, he says. He turns to his left and walks quickly towards the stairs at the end of the corridor. You know, the Baron hates waiting, and even more, he hates sycophants. Leaving your guest house, he darts down the narrow alleyways between the houses, and you have to walk quickly to keep up with him. Soon you come to a wide dirt road lined with cheery crowds. When they see your violet scarf, they cheer even louder and start showering you with flowers. 
No healing potions, just f useless flowers. The long shadows cast by the people in front of you shrink as the bright yellow sun rises higher in the morning sky. Standing there in front of the noisy, vibrant crowd, you feel strangely alone, aware of your coming ordeal. Suddenly, you feel a tug on your shirt, and you see a small guide, the small guide eagerly, eagerly beckoning you to follow him. Ahead, you see the looming hillside and the dark mouth of a tunnel disappearing into its inner depths. As you get closer, you notice two great stone pillars on either side of the tunnel entrance. Where were we? Entrance. The pillars are covered with ornate carvings, writhing serpents, demons, deities, each seeming to scream a silent warning to those who would pass beyond them. You see Baron Sukumvit himself standing by the entrance waiting to greet the contenders in the Trial of Champions. You count five others standing proudly in line, their violet scarves displayed for all to see. We're almost there. We're almost at the start. There are two bare-chested barbarians dressed in furs. They stand completely motionless, legs straight and slightly apart, arms thrust forward to rest on the hilts of their long, double-headed battle axes. A sleek, elven woman with golden hair and feline green eyes is adjusting the crossbell of daggers wrapped around her leather tunic. Of the two remaining when men, one is covered from hemp to toe in iron plate armor with a plumed helmet and crested shield. The other is cloaked in black robes, only his dark eyes showing between the swaths of his black face scarves. Long knives and a wire garrote and other silent death weapons hang from his belt. The five contenders acknowledge your arrival with almost imperceptible nods of the head, and you turn to face the exultant crowd for the last time. Suddenly, a hush falls over the crowd. Let's turn off the music, because a hush fell. Let's make it creepy. A hush falls over the crowd as Baron Sukumvit steps forward, holding his six, ba six bamboo sticks. You draw... One from his outstretched hand and read the word fifth. Then the trial begins. The knight is first. He salutes the crowd before disappearing into the tunnel and is followed half an hour later by the elf. Next goes a barbarian and then the dark assassin. Now it is your turn to salute the crowd. Holding your violet scarf aloft, you take one final deep breath of cool fresh air before turning to pass between the stone pillared gateway into Sukumvit's corridors of power to face unknown perils on the walk through the mighty Baron's death trap dungeon. Ba -da -dam, ba -da 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 -dam. All right, we start in this game as we're about to hit page one. Just for you, so you know, you start with twelve hit points. Super well centered. You can tell I'm a professional because I centered that beautifully. There are your hit points. Twelve. Maybe I just write it twelve, and then we'll remember that it's twelve out of twelve because otherwise it's going to look like dog poop. Good start, strong, very good, professional streamer. That's right, thank you, Rob, for trusting me to do this. Next, we got it, pro moves. Your armor class starts at also 12. Nice, maybe we can improve on these things as we go through the story. Your chance to hit Rob or Jeff, zero. You have plus zero to your, to your rolls to start. This is terrible and we must improve on this. Your plus to damage, also zero. Yikes. No good. No good. And finally, your plus skill, also plus zero. You guys get the sense of where this is going, right? Okay, you kind of suck, Jeff, but I believe in you. It's okay. We can always get better, buddy. All right. So, as you make your way through and you compete complete challenges, you're going to be able to level up. And as you level up, you'll have choices. Hey, Anonymous, thank you for gifting 17,000 subs to the channel. That's very kind. I don't know how many that was. Uh, but thank you for gifting to Munupti, Faith, Slacker, Tuikarus, and Hothmeisters with uh, gifted subs. That's very kind. Uh, ama amazing. You know what? You should be running the stream, Anonymous. Well done. Well done. Um... Let me... What's this? Okay. With this chat, you picked a forest gnome, so let's find an appropriate mini for you. Gnome. Uh, and that's going to be you, I guess. No, that doesn't look quite right. This one? Are there no gnomes with weapons? This one. Perfect. And this is you, Jeff. 
excuse me, with your magnificent 12 hit points and just looking so good. There you are. This is you, Jeff. And we're going to rename this person to Jeff with a DJ. And this is going to be the beginning of our adventure. Let's keep reading. The clamor of the excited spectators gradually fades behind you. As you venture deep into the gloom of the, ga of the cover cavern tunnel, English is difficult. Large crystals hang from the tunnel roof at 20 meter intervals, radiating a soft light just enough for you to see your way. As your eyes gradually become accustomed to the nearby darkness, you begin to see movements all around. Spiders and beetles crawling up and down the chiseled walls disappear quickly into cracks and crevices. As they sense your approach, rats and mice scurry along the floor ahead of you. Droplets of water drip into small pools which, with an eerie plopping sound which echoes down the tunnel. The air is cold, moist, and dank. After walking slowly along the tunnel for about five minutes, you arrive at a stone table standing against the wall to your left. On it, there are six boxes, one of which has your name painted on its lid. Do you wish to open the box with your name on it? Would you prefer to continue and ignore the table? I'm not going to run a poll every time. If you wish to open the box, give me a yay in chat. If you wish to ignore it and keep going, then give me a nay. I'm seeing one yes, two yeses. Open the box. Instantly dead. Imagine, imagine the scam if you instantly died. What would Rob say? Okay. As you approach the table, let's bring it up. Sorry, if I had the physical book and I hadn't lost it, this would be easier, but I don't and I, I can't find it. So we're going to do this with a PDF and it's going to take me a little bit of time. Let's approach the, the box that stands right here. Let's put the music back on because we need the music and then we're going to. Sorry, guys, it's just me. I'm just doing stuff. Uh, dark spaces feels appropriate. If it's too scary, tell me, okay? The lid of the box lifts lifts off easily. Inside, way too intense. Way too intense. Nope. I don't need that intense. Let's go back to this. This is fine. That was way too intense for a cave. Jesus. The lift. The lid of the box lifts off easily. Inside, you find two gold pieces. Nice! And a note written on a small piece of parchment addressed to you. After placing the gold in your pocket, you read the message which says, Well done. At least you have the sense to stop and take advantage of the token aid given to you. Now, I can advise you you will need to find and use several items if you hope to pass triumphantly through my death trap dungeon. Be brave and do not be a kneeler. Signed, Sukumvit. Memorizing the advice on the note, you tear it into tiny pieces and continue north along the tunnel. So let's add the two gold pieces, by the way. I'm not going to scam you out of money. Gold. Uh, there. Two gold. We did it. We won the game. That was it. That was the whole adventure. After walking down the tunnel for a few minutes, you come to a junction. A white arrow painted on one wall points west. On the floor, you can see wet footprints made by those who entered before you. It is hard to be sure, but it looks as though three of them followed the direction of the arrow, while one of them decided to go east. Chat. This is represented here in front of us as the air as the tunnel spreads into two directions. To go west, give me yay. To go east, give me nay. Which direction would you guys like to follow? Hmm. Ooh. I'm more no's than yeses. Oh, it's a pretty close vote. I'm going to give you guys 10 more seconds. Yay. No. We are going east. Excellent. Ahead of you, 
You can see a large obstruction on the tunnel floor, although it is too dark to make out exactly what it is. The wet footprints you have been following carry on towards the obstruction. Chat, with your plus zero, I'm going to ask you to make a little perception check. So roll a d20. And let's see if you figure out what the heck this is. Four plus zero. Strong. Strong roll. Very good. Excellent. Six is excellent. You have no idea what this obstruction is? Do you want to? And I'll give you the... Actually, I don't give you the choice because otherwise it's going to take forever. As you push on further, I'll describe what you see in front of you. I need 56. Sorry, it's going to take me a minute to go through this book because I don't have it in front of me. You see that the obstruction is a large, brown, boulder-like object. You touch it carefully with your hand and are surprised to find that it is soft and spongy. Do you want to climb over it? Or do you want to try to pierce it with your blade? To climb over it, give us a yay. To pierce it with your blade, give us a nay. And I'll build it out here really quick since I didn't do it before. Climb over it, yay. Pierce it, nay. Climb over it. Dude, all day, easy clap. What? Okay. Give me, please. It's also at a plus zero. An athletics roll as you try to push yourself up and above this boulder-like thing. The DC is 10. Easiest climb of your life, you guys. Are you kidding me with this? Easiest thing. As you begin to climb over it, it shifts beneath you. This bulbous mass that is soft is in fact a large spore. As you carefully make your way around, you realize had you pierced it, it would have spelled catastrophe for you. But instead, you deftly climb over it. And as you do so, you pass and you make your way through without any trouble. With that chat, as you face the first challenge and pass it easily, you gain a level. And fancy this is where I'm going to need your help with a pull. Make it as short a pull as possible, 30 seconds or whatever. Guys, do you want to increase your maximum hit points by 1d4? Do you want to increase your armor class by 1, your plus to hit by 1, your plus damage by 1, or your skill checks by 1? So in the pull... That's going to appear on your screen somewhere around. I'm going to need you guys to answer that question. And we'll keep pushing forward. That was way too easy. Super easy for you to, to beat that. So if you get a chance. Options. They're the ones on the bottom left. Hit points, AC, hit, damage, or skill. So the little things that you see there. And we're going to keep pushing on while the pull comes up. So, while you are deciding, and the poll will come up, there we go, thank you. And you might as well sit on that poll or save it, because it's going to come up a lot. Every time you guys level, that's going to come up. The tunnel makes a sudden turn to the left and heads north for as far as you can see. The footprints that you were following start to peter out as the tunnel becomes gradually drier. Soon you are beyond the dripping roof and the pools on the floor. You notice the air becoming hotter and you find yourself panting even though you are walking quite slowly. In a small recess on the left-hand wall, you see a section of bamboo standing on its end. Pushing it down, you see that it is filled with a clear liquid. Your throat is painfully dry and you feel a little dizzy from the heat in the tunnel. Hmm. I mean, it's maybe there for a reason? I don't know. I just work here. Chat. Do you wish to drink from this random puddle of water in this death trap dungeon? 
Yay to drink, nay to not drink. And skill goes up by one, excellent. No, a lot of no. A lot of no. Okay. As you push on, ignoring this thing. Uh, let me mark this as 13. Oops. I said 13. I can't count. That's okay. Excellent. 182. The temperature continues to rise and you find yourself dripping with sweat as you push on. As you struggle on, the heat intensifies until it feels like white heat and becomes so unbearable that you begin to pass out. This game is unforgiving. I need you guys to make a constitution saving throw. You have plus one to your roll thanks to your level up. The DC is 16. Yikes. Well, we did say that we would go until you got three deaths. As you push on, you realize your fatal mistake. You shake your head, trying desperately to stop yourself from blacking out, but the heat is too much, and you fall unconscious to the floor. Sadly, you did not drink from the potion. You did not sustain it with your incredible constitution saving throw. And as you fall to the ground, wondering where everything went wrong so early, you fail to regain consciousness, and your adventure ends here. All right. Death number one, achieved. This book is unforgiving. They're not called choose your own, you know, happy ending. They're called choose your own adventure because you will die a lot. Well, let's go again. Let's rewind time all the way to that passage. And I'm going to offer you the same choice again. <laughs> you guess we can keep getting stuck in this soup. I'm going to assume that you're going to drink this time. In fact, I'm going to make the decision for you so we can move the story along. You drink from the liquid and you continue. Let's keep let's let's read what happens when you drink from the liquid. The water in the bamboo is welcomingly refreshing. Add one skill point. What? Free skill up? Are you kidding me with this? Nice. If only we'd done that earlier. Boom. Easy clap. With this, you continue to move forward. 182, same where we were before. You did drink from the liquid, turn to 25. So we avoid passing out. Instead, what happens? Let's read it together. Although the temperature in the tunnel is higher than you can normally tolerate, the liquid from the bamboo pipe keeps you alive this game is way easier when we do what we're supposed to do i guess mercifully the temperature now starts to drop rapidly and soon it feels almost cool again on the left hand side of the tunnel is a closed door it has a small iron plate in it which might possibly slide open chat do you want to look in the door or ignore it and keep continuing up north yay to slide open that little plate to take a peek nay to keep continuing up north That's it, Redial, Redial knows what's up. Redial knows what's up. I sense a trap. This is not actually here. Okay. Yes, chat says. Let's open that little iron plate and take a look. You are dead. I'm just kidding. The small plate slides easily open. And you find yourself peering into a room with deep pits on the floor behind the door. On the opposite wall, there are two iron hooks 
on one of which hangs a coil of rope. Chat, do you want to try to open the door and jump over the pit? Or would you rather continue north and ignore this dangerous room? And there's the pit. And there's the rope. Let's make it a little bit brighter, maybe. You guys can see more. There we go. Yay to try the jump. Nay to be like, you know, this is obviously a trap. I don't care. We're going to ignore this rope. Hey, Rad. Yes. Let's go in. Let's do it. I'm with Tilia. Like, this seems like such a scam. Oh, that's three and three. Nope. No pain. Oh, I'm seeing four and four. I mean, I've always, I know what happens. I will. I'm not going to help you. I'm going to definitely try to get you killed. Just so you guys know. All right. More yeses than noes. Chat, as you crack the door open, I'm going to ask you to please make an athletics roll. The DC is not that elevated. 12 and you have plus two to your roll. Go for it. As you run up with your uh, natural four plus two, you run up. I'm the king of the world, says Jeff. Except Jeff's foot gets caught in the lip, goes tumbling down head first into the spikes. Ow! It slams. It hurts. You suffer. Two points of piercing damage. It could have been worse, Jeff. It could have been worse. That hurt. And as you climb out of the well, you're down to 10 life. Nice. And there is the rope. As you approach it, there are two hooks. There's a rope. Are we just going to simply grab the rope? Are we going to investigate the room? Those are your two options. One, A, just grab the rope, dude. Why do we need to investigate? It's just a rope. Or two, spend some time investigating there. So, yay, grab the rope. Nay, investigate the room. What's going on here? That's so Jeff of you. I know. Doesn't hurt to check. Okay. You guys are paranoid. Is that my fault? Have I made you paranoid? Oh, that's nice music. Good mood. All right, give me an investigation check. The DC is 15. You have plus two to your roll. Go for it. I believe in you. Come on. Eight. Plus two is ten. Nothing seems untoward. With this, the question then becomes... Will you take the rope, or will you leave it and leave the chamber? Yay, take the rope. Nay, let's just get the hell out of here. I feel like... I don't know what the answer is. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I just, I just work here. Yes? Mistakes were made. You grab the rope. Nothing untoward happens. And as you take the rope off of it, you are now in possession of a rope. I don't have a, a, a an overlay to let you know, but you have a rope, guys. Well done. Let's keep going. The chamber, nothing shifts. You have a nice 50-foot rope that you've picked off the wall, and you're a mega boss. Let's keep going. As you exit the room, feeling super proud of yourself and having accomplished what could not be done... You carefully climb down off the side. I'm not going to make you roll athletics again. You're able to get out of the door without stumbling into the pit. Champion, well done. Ahead, you see that the tunnel turns sharply to the left. I need you to please make a perception check. Four, you hear nothing, and as you turn around the corner, you see there you almost bump straight into two 
fierce looking orcs, armed with morning stars and wearing leather armor. You are totally unprepared, and as you draw your sword, one of them immediately swings at you. Chat, please roll. Jeff, roll initiative. Uh oh. Uh oh. Fifteen? Uh, plus two, seventeen. Nice. I'm gonna roll for these guys. Give me a second. We're in combat. Uh oh, uh oh. Orc number one. Ooh. And orc number two. All right. As you stumble forward, the orc berserker who saw you as you bumped into him will take an attack at you. Now these orcs, this music's a bit loud. These orcs have not eaten in a while. So they're emaciated and they're quite hungry. He has plus zero to his attack roll. You have an AC of 12. Let's see if he hits. 15. Oof. You suffer one point of damage. Lucky dog. All right, Jeff, it is your turn. Here are your options. You can hit it with your big sword, and you can use... So, your options are strike with your blade. You have to try... You can also knock them down. Or as a bonus action, so these are your actions, knock down or attack. Uh, and as your bonus actions, you have uh, second wind, or you can take a defensive posture where you, if you don't move, you can increase your armor class. So with this, this is gonna be really awkward to run, but uh, yay to strike with your blade and to try to knock them down, I guess, is how we'll do it. Yes? No. Somebody wants to not knock them down, knock him prone. I see, I see you, I see what we're doing. No. Perfect. Make an attack roll. As you try to kick out your leg, try to knock him prone. Let's take a look at what we get. I see you. Little, little d20 roll? Little d20 roll? Jeff is not feeling it, guys. Jeff is just not feeling it. And as you stand there, you hold your... Okay. I'm going to have to ask you generally, what is the attitude that Jeff is going to have in combat? Is Jeff going to be super aggressive and try to, you know, go full berserker mode? Or will Jeff try to be more strategizing uh, and generally be more defensive? So depending on what you guys tell me now, and you can just type it out, it doesn't matter. Defensive or aggressive, and then I'll play it accordingly. And I'll ask you guys to roll. Well, with those rolls, mythical rage, aggressive, defensive. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll look at the first five that come up. Red dial, maybe we can. Seems unlikely though. Defense, too defensive. Okay, defensive. That's three. All right, then with this. Full rage, they aren't fully aware that Jeff is alone. It's three and three. All right, next vote gets it. Aggro or defensive? And I'll go with this attitude that you guys might have. As my arm disappears in behind the green screen. Aggro. Done. You guys take no pity, no, no mercy. You hold your ground and you watch as you try to strike Orchidus. You... Next turn, not now, because you've missed your attack, we'll go into, like, a fullest offensive rage. Orchidus, who's behind, can't quite reach. You've managed to create, without moving, the other guy's not able to get out of the way, and you can hear Orchidus say, Hey, move! I want to get stabbing, too! The Orc Berserker, No, no, me first. He's going to try to bull rush you into the wall, chat. I need you to make a contested check. You have plus two. The Orc has plus one. Jesus, you need to beat a 17. Meet or beat a 17, so that's a 14 or better. No, a 15 or better. Good luck. Three. You get pushed back up against the wall. My gosh, you guys are very unlucky right now. And as he creates space, he's going to move to the side. 
That's his turn. But he's created space. Jeff, we're full raging. As you move up, you will use your bonus action. We're just going to make stuff up on the fly. It's fine. I don't mind. Uh, make an attack roll with advantage as you fully rage and go reckless. Roar, taste my blade. Go for it. Can we roll above a five? Yes, we can. Roll a d6 as you swing your blade, pff, catching the orc across the neck. <laughs> Starts to bleed out. Good job. D6 damage. Excellent. It's getting bloody in here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Nice. Five. You have plus zero to your damage. The orc is bloodied. And he watches the orc... Wait, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were that strong. Please. The orc berserker will literally toss his weapon to the floor. I surrender. That's your turn. Here comes Orcatus. Well, I don't. This is nonsense. We've been paid to be here. He ad-libs. He gets advantage on his strike against you because you went reckless. He hits. You suffer 1d4 point, points of damage. Woo! All right, the Orc Berserker will attempt to run away. You could just tell me, do you guys want to take an attack of opportunity or do you want to let him run away? You can just type attack of opportunity, whatever, or just let him run. You can type it out. Let him let him rub? I mean, if you want to, that's a bit weird. What's he rubbing? Let him run. Run, just running. Perfect. He takes off running. Into the distance, leaving you alone, Jeff. It's you and the remaining orc. Full aggro, baby. Make an attack roll. Let's see if we survive this encounter. I'm rooting for you. I really am. Yes! You absolutely end with a nat 20 because you're still recklessly attacking. Huge! Do I have... I don't have my little uh, nat 20 uh, effect. Oh, no. I need it. I need it. Hang on. Where is it? I can't not have it. Uh, here? Can I put it in here? Natural 20. Let's go! Nat 20's rules. You do maximum damage. So 6 damage to start. And then add a d6 on top of it. Roll a d6. Let's see if we finish this guy off in one strike. No, he's down to one life. So close! But he looks to you, Orchidus, and says, All right, I, I, I surrender. Please, if you let me live, I, I'll give you this potion. He puts his hands up. It is his turn. And he drops this little red potion on the ground before backing up. Will you let him run? Or will you kill him where he stands? He might have more loot than what he's willing to give you. Uh-oh. Spare. Let him run. Spare. Ooh. No. No. That's a tie. Next vote. Let him run. Done. With this, the orc will turn tail and take off running, disappearing down the hallway, leaving you to your own devices. Nice! That was close, but you guys managed it. As the orc takes off running, dropping a potion to the ground. It is a potion of healing, and... You guys gain another level. As you sit here and consider what just transpired, cut and bleeding, that was close fight. What do you guys want to level up? You do want to level up your maximum hit points, your plus to hit, your plus damage, your skill, or your armor class. So fancy, you want to roll that pole again. He dropped the potion, redial. He just dropped it on the ground. So as Fancy puts the pull up and shout again for you guys what to level. You catch your breath.
I'll give you guys a chance to vote. Plus, the hit seems pretty important. I'm seeing a lot of that. Maybe a good call. Maybe a good call. Hopefully, I know this is not the usual Robert Reads, but you know what? Rob's not here, so while the cat is away, the mice will play. I think it's uh, some, something like that. Something about mice and, and running and playing or something. I don't know. Okay. With this, you level up. Oh, it's a close vote between hit points and this. Let's read what happens next. Uh, we kill them. Gonna, or we kill them. We beat them. I wish I had my book. I really don't know where it is. But it's going to be a little bit slower because I keep having to go back and forth between things, which is a little bit obnoxious. I apologize. I'll double check the poll in one second just to read the next passage to you. As you walk along, droplets of water again start falling from the tunnel ceiling. You see wet footprints again, made by the same boots that you followed earlier, heading west. The footprints lead to a closed iron door to the right-hand side wall of the tunnel, but do not seem to go any further. Do you wish the door has no peaking mechanism? As you further up ahead, oops, it's closed. I know it looks like it, there's a little window, but there isn't. All right, there's no window. It's just the door. Do you want to keep pushing forward? Or do you want to open the door and take a look inside? And you guys can just type the answer that you want instead of giving me yays or nays. Hit one by 45. Perfect. Perfect. Plus to hit. And I'm going to update this here. Must open door. As you approach the door, Chad, I'm going to ask you to make a little stealth check for me. The door grimaces and grin... As you open it, it just squeaks very loudly. Or does it? It does. That's a seven. However, you are lucky. Because in this door, here's what you see. The door opens into a large chamber where you're shocked to see one of your rivals, who has obviously met a sudden, gory death. It is one of the barbarians, and he is impaled on several long iron spikes which are fixed to a frame that has sprung out of the floor. A lot of rubbish and debris litters the floor, concealing a hidden tripwire which he must have stepped on and thus released the spiked frame. In the far wall is an alcove in which you can see a silver goblet standing on a small wooden table. Let's open this door and take a look, you guys. There's the barbarian, and there's the alcove with the table, and a goblet on it. With this, chat, do you want to, Jeff, try to loot the body of the barbarian, or make your way towards the table with the goblet in it? You can just tell me, type it in chat, loot, loot, it's always so good, we love loot. Lots of loot. We love loot. You can try redial, sure. All right, give me a strength check. As you guys try to grab the body and maybe sort of shift and move him a little bit, maybe filling with this trap is not the greatest idea. You lift with a plus two. Let's see if we're strong enough to move him. Natural 20 again? What is going on? Natural 20. You don't live you don't skip leg day, you don't skip arm day either. As you guys grab the body and lift it up, you hear the sickening of bone, sinew, and skin. As you peel him off and roll him off the trap. In doing so, you see this barbarian wasn't super well equipped. He has a sword that's a little bit too big for you. But he has a pouch. And as you rummage through the pouch with a nat 20, you find two things. One, you find some food. He had dried jerky. Looks delicious. 
And two, he has a necklace. And on that necklace, a skull. Give me a nature check. Let's see if you recognize if what kind of skull that is. Five. You have no idea. Some kind of skull. You pocket the jerky because it could be useful later. Do you want the necklace or do you want to leave it? What will we do with this necklace? Take it. Leave it. We're going to just straight up wear it. Take it. You can wear it if you want. You guys tell me what you want to do with it. Wear. What's the worst that can happen? A strange necklace off a dead body. Alright. I have wear it. Nobody wants to leave it. So we either taking it and pocketing it or wearing it. As you take the necklace. I'm seeing a lot of wear it. You put it around your neck. Yep. You find yourself imbued with the strength of a barbarian. You gain plus two damage to all of your hits while wearing this necklace. What? This game is cheating, dude. I hate it here. You guys are too good at this. What are you talking about? What is this? You guys are supposed to die a bunch. Ridiculous. Ridiculousness. As you wear the necklace, you find yourself... I can kick some butt. Now, are we going to go check out what's on that table and that chalice, or are we just going to get the heck out of here? Leave, or go check out that table over there. It's up to you guys. I make no decisions. Table. Okay. As you make your way, let's go back to the book. All right, this is actually back on book. Let's read it. All of this is in the book. I'm just paraphrasing because the descriptions can be a little bit lengthy. And I know it's Robert Reed's, but this is Rackham Vamps also. Okay, it's both. It's both things. You walk slowly towards the alcove, carefully checking the floor for any more hidden traps. There's nothing there. You see that the chalice contains a sparkling red liquid. You take a sniff. Odorless. Chat, do you want to? Drink? Do you want to dump the water? What are we doing? Just tell me generally what it is you want to do. You have many options. Just type it in chat. We can drink the water. We can leave it alone, get out of here. We can take the goblet. We can look over the table. Many options that are your choice. Test it by pouring a tiny bit on the corpse. Some people just just drink it. Let's drink. Shots, 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 shots. It's that kind of day. We're just doing shots in a dungeon. Kind of like it. Okay. I'm seeing more drink than tested in the corpse. We grab that goblet. The second you pick up the goblet, I need you guys to make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. Yeah. That happened. Seven plus two is nine. As the weight, and in a very Indiana Jones-like way, the, as you shift the weight of the goblet, a trap triggers and an arrow pfft, shoots out into your neck. You do not dodge it. You suffer. Chat, you're down to one life. As the arrow pierces in your neck, <coughs> you rip it out, which is not advisable, by the way. Blood runs down between your fingers. Oh, well, that wasn't good. I need you to make one further dexterity saving throw. See if you spill all the water in that goblet. The DC is 10. Easily done. Easily done. Easiest thing of your life. 
You've been drunk worse than this before. Down to one life. You looked at the goblet. Well, I suppose. Bottoms up? <laughs> As you drink the rank garage water, you heal for eight hit points. In the end, it was still worth it. Not bad. Not bad at all. Do you want to take the chalice too, or are we just bouncing now? There's nothing left in this room. There's just the chalice that's empty. It's a silver goblet. Are we taking it, or are we leaving it? I know. <laughs> Die, Hellbard. I know. We didn't die. You're down. You were down to one. You're just down to one. Take it. Pocket the chalice. Let's go. You take the chalice. You put it in your pocket. What's the worst that can happen? You know what I mean? All right. Let's keep going. Always with that question. What's the worst that can happen? As you exit the chamber, the passage soon leads to a junction. You notice more footprints on the floor, possibly as many as three pairs, heading north from the south passage. And because this is a book and we don't really have all that many options, we have to follow them. So I'm going to take you back out. This is the junction. Just to show you, this would have been the other passage. If you had gone left, this is the connecting passage, but we're going this way. We're going this way. All right, let's keep reading. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Give me a second. Uh, let me see. Give me a I lost my place in the book, but we're going to be back in a second. Uh... Ah! I'll find it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We'll get there. We'll get there. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna describe it to you because I can't remember. I can't find it, but I know exactly what this room is, so we're gonna do this. As you stumble into the next room, you find yourself in a large chamber. And here, you see an enormous statue of a dragon-like entity, humanoid, but dragon in nature. In the top of the statue, this statue is 15, 20 feet in height, hard to climb, but it has two jewels encrusted in its eyes, large emeralds the size of a dragon's heart each, priceless in value. It is flanked by two statues that don't quite look like this, they look more like cranes stone birds that are locked in place and sitting on the ground. We could ignore this and keep going. You could also take a closer look at the statue. You could also inspect the two side statues. And you do have a rope to make the climb much easier. Chat, what would you like to do? Okay, that's not working. Hey, did we get raided? Sorry, I missed it. Tavern, thank you for the raid. Appreciate it. Inspect the statue. Look at all the statues. Okay. You approach a large statue, and Chen, I'm going to ask you to make an investigation roll with your plus two. With a 9 plus 2, 11, that's not bad. That's not bad. Looking at the bottom of the statue, you see that there is an inscription. The guardians will hold their faith. The gems... Or the gem is needed to make your escape. Beware. Beware. That's it. 
what will you guys do? It does say the gem in the singular, not in the plural. Check side statues. Are both eyes stone... Both eyes that are in this statue, they both, at least at the distance that you are, appear to be emeralds. And large emeralds of that. Inspect the side statues. Okay, give me an investigation check as you look to, to the closer side statues. Okay, let me see what you guys rolled. Nice! Plus 214. Your heart and the world around you grows a little bit more quiet. As you look at these statues with a 14, you can tell these are mechanized. You don't know what the mechanism is, but while they're standing still, everything else is covered in some amount of dust. These things, both the left and the right statue, will come to life given the right or the wrong action on your part. And you can see with a 14 as well that inscribed on both of them in runes that you recognize because you're very clever, Jeff. It does say guardian on both of them. Whatever the main statue is warning you about, whatever it is that you're going to do or not do, these things are prone to come to life. What will you do? Thanks, Morty. Appreciate it. Remind us of the inscriptions. The guardians will hold their faith. You need the gem to escape. Beware, beware. What's in our inventory? We have a rope. We have some beef jerky. We could climb. We could tie those things. Somebody suggested continue. Uh, you can tie one of them if you want to. You could try to push one of the statues to knock it over and break it. Also an option. You're quite strong. Um, you could climb and take a look, a closer look at the gems, or you could just ignore this and just keep going. Also an option. So, any one of these, climb and inspect the, the gems, knock the statue over, try to tie them up with a rope, ignore this place and keep going. Ignore it altogether. I'm seeing one, two voids for continue. Hold their faith. Continue for now. The statues are not exactly representative of what it is. Check the rest of the room. Anything that might be the gem instead of the eyes. Okay, I'm seeing more ignores than anything else. Perfect. That's fine. As you collectively decide, mm, I'm not sure about this. You decide to ignore this room and keep going. You make a note of it, and maybe we'll come back to it later. Maybe we won't. Let's keep going. As you push, push past the statue room, not much further down, you come to a closed door on your left. Putting your ear to the door, it feels cool, and you listen intently. You hear nothing. Let's keep going. Do you want to open the door or equally ignore this room and keep pushing north? The dungeon does not wait. Wait. Open. Hi. You hear nothing. It just feels really cold to the ear, but you don't hear anything. Hi, Kerhan. How are you? Okay. You push the door open. As it, la it opens into what appears to be a completely empty room. 
you briefly step inside, look around, you can see that there is, excuse me, as I have my hiccups, the ground is made of really clean marble, but there's not much else in here for now. You can't see around the corners to see if there's anything hidden, if there's a chest or whatever, it just looks like an empty room. Do you want to push forward and actually go investigate the room, or are we just going to close the door and keep going? There could be something really good in here. Can we hear anything? Make a perception check. You have plus two to your roll. Six. You don't hear anything. You just hear the sound of dripping water. With a six, there appears to be something encrusted in the wall across the way. It could be a trick of your eyes, but it looks like something is shining just across the way, about eye level from you. Just could be your imagination, though. And it's shiny. Is the floor a little wet, Dayman? It looks surprisingly clean. It doesn't seem to be... And there might be a black knight waiting here to backstab. So with this, I'll run the po this time. Yay to come in, nay to get the hell out. Or to get the heck out. Apologies. Again. You guys decide, and I'll count. The first four, one way or the other, we're going to do that. Yes, yes. Get in there. Get in there. Yeah, okay. Four people want to get in. As you step inside of the room... Ah, the trap triggers! It's actually a trap room, though. It is. I'm going to read it to you. But there's a good reward if you guys can survive it. As soon as you're inside, the door slams shut behind you and you hear a mechanism. <laughs> Suddenly, a voice booms out out of nowhere, shouting, Welcome to Death Trap Dungeon, the ingenious killer labyrinth of my master. Adventurer, I trust you will pay your respects to my master by kneeling before me. Chat. Will you kneel and hail Sukumvit? Or will you say no? You suck. I'm not kneeling in front of anyone. Yes, kneel, no, not kneel. You can just type kneel or no kneel. It's fine. Kneel, no. Those of you who are here at the beginning of the stream should know the answer to this a riddle as the water begins to fill. I'm seeing a lot of a lot of kneeling. Okay. The overwhelming majority wants to kneel. Overwhelming, I'm seeing one, two, three, four, no, five no's, and the rest is yes. As you kneel in a desperate attempt to appease the master of this dungeon, the voice comes back to you. Hang on, I need a little marker. I have a feeling. I have a feeling this isn't going to end well for us. Now you need to get lucky. As you kneel before Succumvit, who has told you he does not like sycophants and he does not like kneelers, in the first room of the dungeon, once again the mysterious voice calls out. Only this time, its tone is full of contempt and derision. So we have a sniveling weed in our midst, do we? My master has a special gift for you, loathsome creep. Suddenly the water starts pouring in more earnestly through a hole in the ceiling. Soon it rises above your knees to your waist. There is possibly a chance for you to go back to the door and try to knock it down. There's also that fancy, and you were right. There is a gem. No, not a gem. A ring encrusted in the wall opposite will you chat try to make your escape through the door or try to take the time to go get that ring get the ring all right ring it up as you swim forward 
You desperately make your way to the front. I need you to make an athletics check. You have plus two to it. The DC is 14. That thing is jammed in there. You grab it with both hands. 19! Yes! The ring pops out. You're in possession of a gold ring. Nice. And as you have it, the water and the currents have gotten more vicious, making the door harder to unlock. Nothing else happens. You don't have time to look over the ring as you're slowly beginning to suffocate. The DC went from 13 to 15 to break the door open. Chat with a plus two to your roll. This is it. Go for it. With an eight. As you try to put on the ring, you do whatever it is that you try to do. The door will not budge. The ring will not provide any sucker to you. And you find yourself on a second death as the water fills your lungs, the world fades to black, and Jeff, you find yourself undone. But because we have two up to three deaths, the time rewinds. You find yourself again in this room, a ring across the way, and a voice that bellows out yet again. I wonder what it's going to say. I wonder what could possibly say. Let's find out together. Let's read that passage again. Darn it, you guys got unlucky. Uh oh. Uh. You enter a room which is small and completely empty. As soon as you're inside, the door slams shut behind you. Suddenly, a voice booms out of nowhere, shouting. Welcome to Death Trap Dungeon, the ingenious killer labyrinth of my master. Adventure, I trust you will pay your respects to my master by shouting out his name. And kneeling. Chat, I'll ask you the question again. Will you kneel? Or will you tell him to go bite it? You died. No, no, we don't kneel. We learned our lesson. As you retort to him... Uh, what do we sound like? What I, I feel like we should be like French. No, succumbit is a worm. Nom de Dieu, you are a smelly poop. And as you retort with your best wit, once again the mysterious voice calls out. Only this time, to your great surprise, in a far less threatening way. Good, my master likes those who show spirit. Take this gift to help you. It will grant you one boon, but one boon only. Farewell. The gold ring magically is shot out of the wall, rolls, and lands at your feet. The open the door behind you opens back up, allowing you an easy escape out of the chamber. Ring in hand, you have a little bit of time to look it over if you so wish. You could even wear it or pocket it. Chat, do you want to spend some time looking at the ring? Or do you want to pocket it and get out of here? Look at the ring. Look. All right, with this, make an arcana check with a plus two to the roll. As you sit there looking at the ring over, what the heck does this thing do, dude? I don't know, it's just a ring. Is it just a ring? What does it do? Five. <laughs> there will come a day, chat, when maybe you will roll above a five. This is really Rob's stream, you know what I mean? Rob can roll above a three in, like, uh, Dungeon Spire. I love you guys because you are just like Rob and like streamer, like chat, like chat, like streamer. You know what I mean? It just goes this way. It's just a ring. It's just a beautifully made golden ring. Nothing particular about it stinks up to you. Do you want to wear it or do you just want to pocket it for the time being? You don't know what it does, if anything. It's just a ring. Thanks, Moonin. I appreciate it. Rob Christie, I mean... Wear it. Excellent. 
as you leave, and thank you for the seven month subscription. If Rob were here, he would tell you, hey, that was awesome. Thank you. Seven months is, of course, a, a factor of uh, 11 minus 4, uh, which is multiplied by a square root of uh, 49. Uh, you're welcome. I don't know. I'm just, that's what Rob would say, probably. As you wear the ring on your finger. First of all, you've completed that challenge, so, chat. You gain a level. Before we proceed any further, what would you like to level up? Fancy, please, with a poll? That's nice. Wearing the ring. You find that your vision changes. You can see now around. This ring has given you the ability to see through illusions. You bring your hand up. And you can actually see your, for yourself what you look like. You're like, oh, that's what I look like. It removes all manner of illusions. It's not exactly true sight, but for the purposes of this stream, we'll call it true sight. Nicely done. Maths, exactly. Thanks, Red Dial. Thank you. Max hit points going to go up? I'll we'll see. And now McLean and I'm proud. Okay, with this, as you have the ring adorned to your finger... Illusion's gone. Do you want to move further ahead? I'm, I'm showing you what lies ahead. Or do we want to turn back to the gym room? Up ahead, return to the gym room. Tis up to you. Ahead, gem. Two and two? Hmm. Keep going ahead. All right, we're moving. We're moving. We're not going back. Excellent. Perfect. The, no the tunnel moves further, further steadily north. Ahead, you see a thin shaft of blue light streaming down from the ceiling to the floor. It sparkles and shimmers. You can see images of laughing faces in the light. These faces, with your new ability to see, are the spirits of the dead. They are not illusions. They are the spirits of the workers of the labyrinth who have remained behind, who have died during its construction. Shout out, Qatar. Anyway, do you wish to walk through the light and hear what the whispers have to say and possibly be cursed or worse? Or would you walk around the light and away from these disturbing images? Max HP, nice. Chat, roll a d4. Whoever rolls a d4 would be great. Thank you very much. Hey, Just Knox. Your maximum hit points go up by one. Great, that was worth it. What a good level up. Away. Through, around, nobody wants to. Perfect. Most of you want to walk around the light. I think. Away, away, around, around, walk away. Perfect. Excellent. As you ignore whatever warnings light would have given you, you decide, nah, uh, spooky ghosts. Spooky, scary skeletons. Not for me today. You walk around the light. And proceed further into the dungeon. Remember, you're on your last life. As you move forward down the tunnel further and further, you eventually arrive at the largest door that you've seen so far. An arched doorway set in the right-hand wall of the tunnel. It's a stone door that is closed, but there's an iron latch and a round handle. Listening at the door... Give me a perception check to start. You listen. Plus 216. Very good. You hear the faint sounds of something wet and sloshing. And something like a... Maybe a buzz saw 
There's definitely something inside of this room. Do you want to open the door? Or keep going? We love the door. We love the door. Sounds good. We love it. Everybody loves it. Yeah, I'm seeing nothing but yeses in chat. Yep, love it. Love it. Everybody loves it. Yep, yes, more yeses. Great. Awesome. <laughs> Literally everybody hates this room. Amazing. Amazing. Utharder, thank you. Utharder for president. I will vote for you instantly. Right now. I'm voting for you right now. You don't believe it, but it's actually true. We will not try the door. We will not go and inspect whatever madness lays within. Instead, we will continue north, ignoring whatever crazy was in that super cool room. By the way, it's a super cool room. And it's just you guys missed out on an awesome room, a great fight, and cool loot. But you know what? I'm not even sad about it. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, I'll show you anyway. You didn't go in. That's fine. Look, there's cool stuff on the floor. And you come in, and look, there's like worms and stuff. There's a pile of bones. And I'll show you. A huge giant black fly the size of like an ox. And you guys missed out on this? Come on now. That would have been great. It's baited. All right, I'm sad about it. We're out of here. Get out of here, giant bug with your stupid silver sword. Nobody wants you. I mean, I'm fine. I'm not bitter about the whole thing. It's okay. It's totally fine. Oh no! As you push further down the tunnel. The tunnel eventually ends shortly at a junction. There's a passage right and a passage left, east and west. Heading west, it veers into darkness, though. Make a perception check. Let's see what you can make out in the far distance, if anything. Nine? There's a glint of light coming from the down westward tunnel. To the east, you see a set of staircases that lead upwards and into the darkness. Will you go east or west, chat? West, a little bit of light. East, a set of stairs that go up. Light's good, right? It should always go towards the light. I'm sure it's fine. It's not a trap. You're not going to instantly die, right? You should listen to me. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's light. It's what? It's a close vote. Dang it, East is winning. You guys don't believe me, right? Every time I say something, you guys decidedly want to do the opposite. Love it. Rob, I'm sorry that your chat, I don't know what you've done to them, but they don't, they don't believe you. You begin making your way east foregoing the awesome mirror that sits down here and whatever other cool stuff was there fine we abandoned cool stuff it's okay so sad okay you want to go east i see you i see you you walk down the passage and soon find yourself climbing up a set of stairs standing at the edge of a deep dark pit the passage continues east on the other side of the pit you might be able to make the jump, but it would be close because the the jump, the gap that exists here, is 25 feet in length. There is, however, dangling from the ceiling, a conveniently placed rope. You also have your own rope, and there are stalagmites and stalactites here. Down below as you peer, darkness... Spikes. You see this enormous vine that's kind of intertwined through the bottom of the spikes that sits there. Maybe that'll soften your fall if you don't make it. What would you like to do? Use the let use this the the rope that's dangling from the ceiling here. Or use your own rope, or just try to make the jump. Centauri, come on. Turn around immediately. Own rope. Okay. How far down is the pit? Well, I didn't build the map to scale, but it's about 35 feet down. It would hurt a lot. Alright. 
Give me a dexterity check as you lose your lope and so, lope. Use your rope and sort of lasso it. You try to aim for a select tight. Stalactites tumble. Ten. Good enough. You feel like your rope is latched into a stalactite. Probably, maybe good enough for you to swing around, sort of like Tarzan style. Do you want to... It'll be fine. What's the worst that can happen? Are we swinging? Or are we climbing down into the pit? Your rope is long enough that you could tie it and then just climb down into the pit. Climb down. I'm seeing climb down and seeing swing. It's two, for, two and two right now. I believe in you. Swing. Okay. Swing. Oh. Okay, the next vote is the deciding vote. Swing or climb. The next person gets it. Tuesday says climb. I, th I don't know, Tuesday, if you already voted. Let me s scroll up. I don't see if I... I don't think you had voted, so it's actually going to be... A climb down. As you make your way towards the edge of the pit, clever choice, Chet, because as you begin making motions, you suddenly see the vine that was at the bottom of the pit slowly rises and turns into an enormous shambling mound that was just waiting for you to swing across to lash out and grab you and devour you. Instead, you climb back up, then you can see the creature as it bellows furious hatred to you. I'm going to ask you, instead of instantly dying, to instead, please, roll some initiative for me. That is a 10, and I will roll for Mr. Oh, you all get the jump on it. So we're gonna clear initiative, you, and then the Shambler. What chat will you do? You can't quite reach it with your weapon. I'm gonna give you some options. You can Mario Toadstool jump on it if you wanna try. You can just run, ba -boing, try to jump on it, and make it to the other side. Worth a shot, I'll call that DC 15, with a plus two to the roll. Dangerous, but achievable. You can try to use your rope and swing above it. Somebody said, try to feed it some jerky. Maybe we can give it some food. That might work. You have no magic available to you. You guys skipped a bunch of rooms that had some magic and we totally didn't want to do it. Or you can leap down below and start getting in combat with it and start swinging. What will you do? Feed it some jerky. Mario Toadstool. Rope swing. Fight. I see one vote for Mario. How far is the Barbarian Corpse? Really far, Spades. Feed it. Run? Yeah, we can turn away and run. You can absolutely just absolutely get out of here and run. I see two. You can absolutely turn around. Feed, feed, a lot of feed. Let's give it some food. As you rummage about your little pouch, I know that sounds dirty, but I don't mean it that way. You take the dried beef jerky and you throw it to the shambler. You watch as it suddenly tendrils grow and a voice that sounds colder than the grave emanates somewhere from within. As it turns to face, you can see the body of one of the previous contestants that has been absorbed and using it like a disgusting meat puppet, it makes the mouth move to say, The only other thing that you have, and you're lucky that you still have it, is the healing potion. Will you Mario Toadstool jump, run away, feed it your healing potion? Mario, that's one for Mario. 
Let's get the music back in here because this is intense. Run. Mario. Feed. Run. Okay, I'm seeing some runs. Some Marios. Mario. It's me, Mario. Hello. It was a good run, Mario. The DC is decreased. You have fed it. It is a little bit more sluggish. Chat, with a DC of 12, you need to run a, ten, a roll a 10 or above to Mario Toadstool your way across. Come on! You run! Okay. Okay, hang on. Yeah, we have to celebrate that moment, chat. We have to celebrate it. It's perfect. It's exactly what I was hoping for. With that, chat, you roll. That's a one. As you try to leap across the way, first of all, you get a, you guys haven't never seen Potato Face. You turn into a potato, let's be clear, right? You potato the heck out of it. Uh, potato Song, you guys probably don't know the Potato Song on this channel. Let's hear the Potato Song for the Nat One. Here, this is you. I'm a potato, you're a potato, we're all potatoes, let's be potatoes. Excellently done. As you run, you stumble. You instantly stumble and fall head over tea kettle down below at the foot of the um, shambler. You take some damage. In fact... As you fall down, you regret in your in your French little mind. Ah merde, Mario, c'était un gros menteur, which is, oh my goodness, Mario, you big poopoo -poo face. And with that, as you tumble head over tea kettle, I don't know what the expression is. You head first into a pile of spikes. The world is not kind. However, at the edge of death. Your ring flares to life. You are brought back to the top. You guys are lucky you found the wish ring. You are brought back to the top. The ring is consumed. You are brought back with one life. Chat, as you stand in front of the Shambler, somehow brought back to life, you can have another shot at this. Do you want to? I will ask you the same question. Run Mario again. Feed it the health potion. <laughs> I love how committed you are to the Mario bit. I love it. It has to be. Ass over tea kettle, that's the one. Thank you. I'm going to give a curse to Mario face. It's me, Mario Luigi. What are we doing? Koopa has gotten so big. All right, chat. DC 12. You have no star. You're just running and jumping. Let's see it. Oh, drinking the potion first probably makes a lot of sense. Ay, 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 ay. As you run up with... Listen. Do the Mario. It's not much better. It's simply not much better. I saw the comment that you would have liked to drink the potion before you did that. I'm fine with that. So go ahead, as you're about to turn into a ghost, roll 2d4 plus 2 for hit points, and let's see how much damage you take off the fall. Oh, Valgav, that nat 20. So say it. I know, right? 2d4 plus... There's one. There we go. That's five plus... How did... Oh my goodness. You regain five hit points. As you fall down, there's a chance you survive. It's 2d6 damage. You take maximum damage. And as the world sadly fades for you, my dear Jeff... The Shambler goes and looks down to you and says, When I said I was still hungry, I would have taken that healing potion, but I guess your whole body will suffice. And as it consumes you, 
Heart and soul, the healing potion would have been enough, in fact. The Shambler grows ever larger. Your adventure, sadly, comes to an end. You will never know the room of frozen heroes. You will never know the room of the skeleton king. You will not know the mushrooms nor the goblins. No make your way through the chamber and the rest of the death trap dungeon. Chat, good try. Good run. I think you guys did really well. Um, it wasn't easy, but we did it. We did it what we could. We did what we could. Uh, with that, I know I'm a little bit short on time. I said about two hours. Well, I'm just under under par. Um, before I go, I just want to say something uh, because I can because I'm hosting for Rob. Rob will be back soon. I think he comes back Saturday or Monday or something. I don't quite know. Fancy will we'll know better than, it, than I will. Uh, but I just, I know he will never watch this VOD, and it doesn't matter, but it's more uh, between you and me. Okay, this is our secret. Rob's a good bean, you guys. Um, I mean, I don't know him in real life, obviously. I know him through the internet, and we've communicated outside of here. We have a project that's maybe spanning to start in January sometime, so keep your eyes on the socials. We'll see. But genuinely, he's a good guy. Um, he's made room for smaller streamers. He's shown support from, you know, when I had like three viewers, he was like, hey, this guy's pretty good. I should, I should encourage him to keep going, and he did which was really a good boon because, you know, content creators, not me, like this, I do this for a hobby and it's fun, but like imposter syndrome is a mother lover. You know what I mean? It's tricky. It sucks. Uh, and oftentimes you doubt yourself, like, am I doing a good job? And having someone like Rob who has your back, who says, hey, no, you're doing good stuff. Actually, it's really enjoyable. And even if you haven't found your audience yet, you will in time. It helps. It really helps. And he had no reason to do any of that, right? There's no incentive for him. There's no financial financial benefit. It's just he does it because he really believes it. So um, Rob is a good bean. And I just want to say that it's very nice. I know I'm still a ghost. You guys are dead. So you get ghost view. Um, with this, uh, that's it. I want to just thank Rob. He'll never see this and it's fine. And I don't expect him to. And I don't want him to. Uh, but I just want you to know that as his audience, his primary audience, um, he is a wonderful content creator, and uh, you're right to be hanging out in his chat. You know, you could do a whole lot worse these days. So that's a great endorsement for me to Rob. You could do worse. Uh, it would be hard to do better. So with this, as we wrap up and my last host of the stream, thank you, Rob, for being a good bean. Thank you guys for being here and hanging out. Um, let's find somebody who's online. I just saw Rob is online, and I almost said, let's go raid Rob. That's me. I'm hosting for him. Is there anybody online who's a friend of Rob's um, that would benefit from this raid and a little bit of love going their way? I don't know. You guys tell me. Um, there is. I really don't know anybody who's online right now. So otherwise, we could just end the stream, and I'm happy with that as well. Anybody online? Do we know anyone? Chat? I'm looking. Um, yeah, you're welcome. You guys, I do Twitch plays D&D often. Um... But that's that's irrelevant, irrelevant. Just hang out, stay with Rob. He's a, table stories online. Is Rob's friend with table story? Cool. Then uh, I guess fancy. Can I trust you to send us over to table story doing their ashes of Ariador storyline? Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys. Uh, don't no. It's fine. Just hang out with Rob. He's a good. He's a good bean. Uh, I hope to see you guys. At some point, maybe, I'll be in the channel as well, lurking. Big fan of, of Rob's. And uh, see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy Halloween. Happy whatever it is that you celebrate. Happy New Year. Take good care of yourselves. Wait, 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 wait. Before you go, hit the subscribe button, please. It costs you nothing to do, but it helps YouTube to know that I'm awesome. And everybody should know that I'm awesome. Thank you.